Well, uh, good morning, class. Nice to see you. Although I can't actually see you, but I, I assume if I could, it would be nice to do so. Uh, this video is all about learning how to multiply variables that have exponents, okay? We want to deal with this situation right here. Let me write it up on the board. Uh, we got x squared multiplied by x to the third. x squared multiplied by x to the third. Now we're going to have a rule for this. And it's going to be a very important rule. And I want you to really look at this rule because this rule is beautiful and it deserves your attention. Watch. x squared times x to the third is x to the 2 plus 3, which is equal to x to the fifth. So when we got variables that got exponents, what you do, assuming the variable is the same, is you just add the exponents. So when you're multiplying the variables, you add the exponents. That's what we do. And I know what you're saying right now. You're saying, uh, what you talking about, Mr. Miller? What you talking about? I don't believe you. Good. You don't have to believe everything I say. Maybe it's wrong. Let me try to convince you. Let me try to convince you. What is x squared? Ultimately, x squared is x times x. And what is x to the third? It's x times x times x. And we're taking these two, we're multiplying them together. So, x times x times x times x times x is x to the fifth. That's why this works. Because people, we did a bunch of these and we noticed that pattern. Look! That's what it is. So what we do is instead of listing them all out, you can just now add the uh, add the the exponents and boom, money in the bank. You got yourself your answer. Right. Now let's uh, let's do a little more of this. I'm just going to drop right down below, and we will have four x squared y to the seventh. So now I'm hitting you with an integer in front of the variable. I'm hitting you with two variables, but that's all good. Remember, once you fundamentally understand this, it doesn't matter how many variables I give you. The more, I could have X, Y, Z, T, R, S, it would just be a longer problem, but not necessarily a more difficult problem. As long as you're only focused on the step you're on, then however many variables there are just simply makes it longer. It doesn't make any of the individual steps more difficult. So I want you to look at this and see that all it is is this three times. So watch. First thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with the integers. We're going to deal with the integers that don't have any exponents, by the way, or a positive one, but we don't write the positive one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with that. And while we're dealing with the 4 times 3, I'm not worried about the x's or the y's. I'm only interested in the step I'm on. So what you do is you multiply the numbers. So I have 4 times 3 gives me 12. Alright. Now I'm done with the numbers. I'm not concerned with them anymore because I just finished. I'm on the next step. Deal with each variable. Uh... Uh, differently or, or at the same or not at the same time meaning uh, deal with your X's then deal with your Y's so right now I'm going to deal with my X's and while I'm dealing with my X's I ain't worried about my Y's if I start talking about the Y's be Mr. Miller you're talking about the Y's but you're not on that step you're on the X's so I have X squared X to the fourth yo that's the same thing as up there so we say X I got my 2, my 4, I say, uh, I want to write a 2 there, uh, 2 plus 4. Alright, now I'm done with my x's, I ain't worried about them anymore. I'm going to focus on my y's. I got y to the 7, I got y squared. So that's y to the 7 plus 2. Alright, now let's simplify. Uh, 12, I'm just going to leave 12, it's 12 is 12. x to the 2 plus 6, I'm going to recognize as x to the 6 y to the 7 plus 2, I will recognize as y to the 9th, and I will 
I'll call that my answer, because notice all those exponents are positive. And assuming they're all positive, you're done. If they were negative, you would still have to simplify further. But as for right now, no additional simplification is necessary. All right. Pause that video. Look at these problems. Make sure you can do them, because I'm about to hit you with a different problem. All right, this is the one I want you to really attempt. I don't want you to wait for this one. I want you to put some effort down on this one after I write it up on the board. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that initial example up there. And here we go. You ready for this? You can do this. You got this. Five. We don't worry about no fives. X to the negative three. Y to the two times 11 x to the fifth, y to the negative seven. I know you're seeing those negatives and you're thinking, that confuses me every time I see negatives. I don't do so good, Mr. Miller. Well, no, uh, that ain't true. That's just a, a myth you're telling yourself. Let me tell you, you can get this. Now I'm going to show you how, because that's what I'm here to do. That's why uh, they call me a uh, teacher. All right. We'll pause and try. All right, unpause. Here we go. See, I always tell people to pause, and, and the reason is, is when you hear it, it makes sense to you. You say, oh, I get that. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm cool. I got that. But if you haven't tried it, you don't really know. You haven't tried to access where it is in your brain uh, quite yet. So uh, let's look. Uh, 5 times 11. Again. The fact that there's negatives is not going to change the fundamental philosophy that we're going to do the numbers before the variables. 5 times 11 is 55. All right, now let's deal with the x's. And while we're dealing with the x's, let's not be worried about the y's. I see this negative, but I don't care. Because I know that what I'm supposed to do is take that variable and then I add their exponents. It doesn't mean, it. So, so they're negative, so what? Ne add them. Don't worry about the fact that it's negative, just add them together. Now let's deal with the y's. See, I know that when I'm multiplying these variables, the variable stays the same, I add the exponent. So the fact that that's negative ain't going to trip me up. I got 2 plus negative 7. All right, cool. Well, let's see if these negatives what they're going to do. Let's add them together. Adding negatives is fun. It's just a little exercise we do, so let's do it. Let's not worry about it. Let's not worry about that. That negative 3 plus 5, oh, positive 2. Hey, the negative went away anyway, so uh, uh, I guess there was nothing to worry about after all. Y, 2 plus negative 7, y to the negative 5. Am I done? Am I done? No! I'm not done yet. And why? Why am I not done yet? That's the question. Mr. Miller, you are not done yet because you haven't simplified. Because what we dealt with is that with exponents, it's not simplified if you have a negative exponent. So we got to use the rule, and I'm going to put the rule right here, that some variable raised to a negative exponent you can go 1 over and make the exponent positive. I'm going to use that rule here. Obviously, the, the number is different, but uh, the philosophy is the same. 55 x squared, but now I'm going to take that y and put it into the denominator. Now, you better believe I'm done. You better believe you're done. And the last thing you just do is make sure you can, uh, make sure you can hit this problem up, all right? Make sure you got this. Well, that was fun. Uh, I hope you learned something. I always enjoy, uh, always enjoy this kind of uh, manipulation uh, where, where we try to look at something that looks confusing, but we take it step by step, and we, and we try to cut through that confusion and make sense out of it. Uh, you've only just begun. Don't judge yourself yet. Just, uh, just keep trying, all right? All right.